quarterfinals day at the ATP Tour 500 China Open in Beijing and five of the tournament's top seeds had made it through to the last eight. Number one seed Novak Djokovic was first on the Lotus Court, up against Frenchman Gilles Simon. Their paths to the last eight couldn't have been more different. Simon had battled through two tough three-setters, whilst Djokovic had spent just 70 minutes on court in total, and the Serb raced into an early lead. I think he's got it. Simon had his chances in the opener, but was unable to take them, and the defending champion was soon a set to the good. Oh, it's a hell of a volley. What made it so good was that he didn't try and hit the deep one. In the second, Djokovic moved into cruise control, but there were still flashes of brilliance from the talented Frenchman. What a point! However, it was a minor delay to a convincing victory for the Serb. And emphasis with the exclamation point. His fourth ace. And it is a straight sets win as Novak Djokovic takes out Gilles Simon. 6-3, 6-2 in the quarterfinals of Beijing. John Isner had failed to beat Nikolai Davidenko in their two previous tour level meetings. But the American has improved immeasurably in recent months, as the Russians soon discovered. The opener was a tight affair, but the young American serve was functioning beautifully. And doesn't need any more than the one to seal the victory. 7-2 in the tiebreak, 7-6 in the opening set. John Isner out in front in Beijing. Even when Davidenko did manage to manufacture break points, Isner's huge delivery came to the rescue, and a slightly shell-shocked Russian was soon staring defeat in the face, with Isner just a point away from a place in the last four. Well, it took a third try, but he did it. John Isner upsets the four seed and a top ten opponent for the first time in 2010 en route to the semifinals in a straight sets win. 7-6, 6-4 versus Nikolai Davidenko. Robin Soderling held a 7-2 advantage in career meetings against David Ferrer prior to their quarterfinal match in Beijing, but it was the Spaniard who got off to the better start. Ferrer was in an aggressive mood, and Soderling was powerless to stop the 8th seed claiming the opening set, thanks to a double service break. The Swede rallied in the second and broke Ferrer early, but just when it looked as though the Moon Court crowd was in for a three-setter, Soderling double faulted twice in succession, and the Spaniard seized the chance to level and then draw ahead. Soderling's match point appeal was more hopeful than anything else, and Ferrer was through to the semi-finals 6-2, 6-4. Ivan Lubacic was in blistering form against the second seed, Andy Murray. After threatening early on, Lubacic finally broke in the sixth game. And one service break became two, as the Croatian took care of the first set with consummate ease. Oh no! A little too hairy casual from Murray. The second set was no better for an out-of-sorts Murray, as Lubacic continued in the same vein, to counter towards the semi-finals. Uh, he has been devastating at the net today. Certainly has, posting some good numbers in the forecourt. It's 9 out of 10. A comprehensive straight sets win for the 31-year-old from Croatia, Ivan Lubacic advances to the semifinals 6-3, 6-2, taking out the two-seed Andy Murray. Hi, I'm Novak Djokovic. Watch me play for a place in final in Beijing on TennisTV.com, the home of live tennis.
If I knew made a great start, you broke him in the sixth game, you came to the net quite a lot, you looked quite aggressive. I mean, how did you see it from your point of view? Well, yeah, that's exactly what I had to do. Obviously, my idea wasn't to, to play a lot of shots from baseline with him. Uh, I had to be aggressive. I was lucky that I was feeling really well today. Uh, all my shots were working perfectly and um, yeah, conditions suit my game, I think, really well tonight. I felt like indoors, really really dark and, and, and uh, no wind at all and uh, it was was perfect, perfect night for me. It was quite a quick match as we, we were saying before, um, does that help you at this stage in the tournament or are you just glad that you're now through to the semi-finals? No, it does help of course, I mean if you can if you can play less tennis uh, it's always better of course if, you, if you're winning, uh, it, it helps of course, I mean uh, being 31 and, and you know you, you don't want to stick around for too long on, a, on the court if you don't have to so it was, again, it was perfect match for me and I managed to break in three times and then to hold my serve all the way. So, yeah, it was, it was really nice. Through the semi-finals, um, maybe not the player you're going to face tomorrow that you might have thought. I mean, who knows, but he played a fantastic game today. Oh, um, he's, yeah, he's, he's a rock-solid player. I mean, he's, uh, I think he's going to be number eight maybe after, after this week. So, he's definitely contender for the, for the finals, World Two finals. So... I have very negative score against him as well. He, I, I don't like to play him a lot, so a lot of negative things about him. But uh, the good thing is that I'm feeling well, and uh, it's going to be same conditions, same place. So I hope I can continue where I stopped tonight. When you have um, a losing record against a player, and I know it's on clay, but it's still a losing record. Does that enter your head at all, or do you just not even think about that? No, I mean, you, when you feel good the way I'm feeling right now, you don't really have to think too much about it. When you have doubts in your head, when you are not in confidence, then when you don't have confidence, then of course those things are, are, are in your head. And although you don't want to think about them, they are there. So at the moment, I, I don't mind uh, too much about it. I, I know that if I play the way I play tonight, I'm going to have a chance. And that's, that's exactly what I'm going to look for.